59 Agent Desktop Plus is a web-based application that runs in your default browser. Your login credentials are provided by your 59 administrator or contact center manager. Type in your username and password. You might be prompted to change your password upon login. Click the link that redirects you back to the 59 Agent portal and change your password and security question. After logging in, the Customer Portal page will be displayed. Select the Agent link to access the Agent application. Before the Agent application opens, you will be prompted to select your station type in the Station Setup window. After selecting this option, enter the station ID provided to you by your administrator and click Next. If the soft phone is installed, the station check will run to connect the soft phone. It will then play three tones to verify the audio connection. The window will also indicate a successful connection and show the input and output audio devices being used. From this screen, you can change the audio device used for your speaker and microphone. If you did not hear three tones or you would like to change the default audio device, you can use the Restart Station button to reconnect the audio channel. Then click View My Dashboard. The Agent Desktop Plus homepage will appear. The 5.9 Agent application can be used to receive and process several media types, such as calls, voicemail, chat, and email. The application includes tools to support these communications, such as call scripts, worksheets, dispositions, and call management using typical phone features such as hold and transfer. There are four main sections of the Agent Desktop Plus. The top panel displays the agent's ready state on the left and several action buttons on the right. The agent's ready state has a timer that displays the duration of the current state. The action buttons on the right include quick access to messages, reminders, help, and agent user settings. The vertical panel on the left contains different tabs that provide access to the pages within the web application. Here you will see the Home tab, the Call tab, Voicemail tab, Chat tab, Email tab, Social tab, Contacts tab, and your Activity tab. The main area of the Agent Desktop Plus application changes depending on the tab selected. It contains the main working space you will use for different tasks such as processing calls and voicemails. The bottom panel contains the user's ACD status on the left, while the right lower panel displays the current time for the specified time zone, the restart option button, and volume properties for the soft phone. Event notifications also appear on the lower right side of the window. These include new messages and voicemails, incoming calls, dispositions, or error messages. The notifications appear as cards that provide information on important events that happen while you are logged in. On the lower right side of the agent application, you will find the volume and microphone icons. Click on the volume icon and adjust the slider up or down to increase or decrease the output volume. Click on the microphone icon and adjust the slider up or down to increase or decrease the input volume. If you are experiencing audio issues, you may follow the steps provided in restarting your station. The agent state reflects your current status and task. It provides different ready and not ready states that enable the system to assign specific tasks to agents depending on current availability. When you click on the agent state drop-down list, you will see a green icon with a check mark that contains different ready state options. The red icon with an X contains the not ready state options. Before going on ready state, you need to specify the channels you're going to work with. When you click on ready for, a pop-up window will appear to provide you with the different media types you can work with. Enable the media type or types by selecting the box or boxes that you wish to receive. Once you click on the Confirm button, you will immediately change to the ready state and will begin receiving calls, voicemails, or text. The state drop-down remembers your last preferred media items and you can select Ready, Voice, VM, Text to quickly change your state. 
The audio options are the sound settings for your agent application. If enabled, a tone is played when a call is connected, if a new message is received, or if there's an overdue callback. To access the audio alerts, click on the settings icon on the upper right of your page Then select Sound Alerts. You will see a list of events that can be enabled with an alert tone. A checked option means a tone is enabled. For example, an alert tone plays whenever an incoming inbound call is connected if new bound call is enabled. Enable the other options that are applicable or click Cancel to retain the default settings. Callers dialing into your company are processed by an inbound campaign and route it according to the rules of the campaign. Let's review how to accept or answer calls routed to you from an inbound campaign. You must be in a ready state to receive incoming calls. When a call is routed to your station, you'll hear a tone and see the incoming call window. You can then greet the caller as would when answering a phone. The incoming call window displays general information about the call. Click OK after reviewing this information. Once a call is connected, the current call screen is activated. The script tab opens automatically if the campaign has a script associated with it. Typically, the call script provides your talking points for the call. You can continue to process the call using your contact center's standard call procedures. Depending on your administrator settings, call scripts may be available on your account. A call script can be a simple call flow, sales pitch, or legally mandated script assigned to your campaign. Upon receiving a call, click OK once you have reviewed the customer's information on the voice interaction pop-up window. If a script exists for your campaign, the Script tab becomes active and is the first visible screen after receiving a call. On the Agent Desktop application, you can set the next state you will be in after your interaction with a current contact. This is helpful when you need to go on a not ready state and prevent accidentally accepting a call when you need to be away from your station. You can set a not ready state if you need to be away from your station. You can select a reason code to reflect activities such as going on lunch break and attending training or a meeting. Take note that reason codes are configured by your administrator and may be different for your account. It is also an optional feature, so they may not be available in your setup. While on a call, select Not Ready or the appropriate reason code in the Agent State drop-down menu. An indicator right beside the State drop-down shows the pending state. When you finish a call, your state will switch automatically to the pending state. You can also use this method if you want to change media channels while on a call. To start a manual call, go to the Call tab and click the Select Contact button to pull up the directory. From the Select Contact window, you can place a call to another agent, a skill group, a number in the speed dial directory, or to an outside phone number. The Agent section shows a list of all the agents in the contact center. The icon next to the name indicates the availability of that agent. Green means the agent is ready to take a call, while red means that person is logged in but not ready to receive a call. Gray means that the agent is offline. Below the Agent section, you will see all available skill groups. When calling a skill group, your call will be answered by any available agent within that skill. The last section on this page shows the speed dial directory if one was created by the contact center administrator. If the list is too long, you can filter the view by groups, by role, by state, or by name. Enable these filters by clicking on the drop-down links found on the upper right-hand side of the window and selecting or deselecting the appropriate checkboxes. To initiate a call, select an entry from the list, then click the Select Contact button. Once selected, the information should populate the field on the main call page. 
Click the dial button to start the call. Alternately, you can use this field to directly type the name of the agent or skill group you want to call. The system automatically searches the directory for entries that match the information you're typing in and presents you with a shorter list of contacts to select from. To dial an external number, type the phone number directly in this field and click Dial. Depending on your call center setup, you may also need to associate a manual call with a campaign. Do this by selecting the appropriate option under the Campaign drop-down menu found next to the Dial button. The Hold feature allows you to place a call on hold. When a call is on hold, the contact hears hold music until the call is retrieved. To place a call on hold, you need to be in the Voice tab to click the Hold button. The timer on the Hold button will indicate how long the contact has been placed on hold. Retrieve the call from hold by clicking on the same button. The transfer function allows you to forward your current call to a third party number, a skill group, or another agent. When initiated, your contact is placed on hold and will hear the hold music until the transfer is completed. To transfer a call, click the transfer button. The transfer window opens. Use the field to type the name or phone number of the party to transfer the call to. The system performs a real-time search as you do, pulling up entries that match the characters you're typing in. Alternately, you can click the Select Contact button to browse the list by agent, campaign, skill, or speed dial entry. Next, select the type of transfer call you want to initiate. A warm transfer allows you to speak with a third party before transferring the call. This option is useful when you need to provide the third party participant with details about the call before transferring it. To call the third party participant, click the Initiate Transfer button. This puts the original caller on hold until you click either the Complete Transfer or Cancel Transfer button to finalize the transaction. A cold transfer immediately connects the original caller to the third party participant and disconnects you from the line at the same time. As such, you'll only see the Complete Conference button if this option is selected. You can also specify how the system will handle the original call if it's not answered by the third party participant within the defined time limit. You can either have the call routed back to you or sent to the third party's voicemail when the time limit expires. Unanswered calls that are returned to you will be placed in your parked call list and must be retrieved. Note, regardless of the type of transfer call you'll be making, it is important that you set a disposition for the call before transferring it to an external number or contact. A conference call is established when you add one or more people to an active call. The people on the call may consist of multiple agents or third parties. To set up a conference call, click the Conference button while the current call is still active. When the conference window pops up, Use the field to type the name or phone number of the party you want to add to the call. The system performs a real-time search as you do, pulling up entries that match the characters you're typing in. Alternately, you can click the Select Contact button to browse the list by agent, campaign, skill, or speed dial entry. Next, select the type of conference you want to set up, warm or cold. A warm conference allows you to speak with a third-party participant before joining this person to the call. There are two steps to this process. First, click the Initiate Conference button to place the original contact on hold while you speak to the third party. When you're ready to bring everyone into the conference, click Complete Conference. A cold conference does not offer this opportunity and automatically connects all the parties in the call. As such, you'll only see the Complete Conference option after selecting the third-party contact. Marking the Include Caller's Information checkbox 
lets the third-party participant receive the contact details of the original caller. If unchecked, the third-party participant will receive only information about the agent that initiated the call. To leave a conference, click the Leave Conference button, then select the appropriate conference call disposition. This allows the remaining parties to continue on with the call even after you have dropped off. The Park Call feature can be used when you need to make or accept another call while engaged in a current call. The feature works similarly to placing a customer on hold, where the customer hears the hold tune, but works differently in that the callout function is enabled when you park a call. Note that if you work on active campaigns, either inbound or outbound, you may receive another campaign call while your original call is parked. To avoid this, be sure to select a not ready state before parking the call. To park a call, click the Park button on the Current Call panel. The call is displayed in the Parked Calls panel. You will see the caller's phone number, the campaign associated with the call, and a timer that shows how long the call has been parked. To retrieve a parked call, click on the phone number, then click on the Retrieve Call button. The voice interaction window appears with details of the call. You can add a parked call to a conference by going to the Parked Call panel while you are on a call. Click on the phone number of the user you want to add, then click on the Add to Conference button. To transfer a parked call, click on the phone number, then click on the Transfer Call button. The transfer window appears with the details of the call. Select a third party where you want to transfer the call. You can use the search field or filter the list by speed dial, agents, skill group, or campaigns. Check the status of the party where the call will be transferred to. You can only transfer to agents who are on a ready state, indicated by a green checked circle. Names with a red crossed out circle are on a not ready state, and those with a gray circle are offline. The time between when a caller or contact is disconnected and before you disposition a call is called wrap-up time. The wrap-up time is an opportunity for you to complete after-call activities, such as entering notes, before you make yourself available for the next call. To end a current call, click on End Call button. The call will disconnect, allowing you to enter notes on a worksheet, complete the comments section, or finalize edit in an external application before you make yourself ready to take the next call. In many cases, the person you are talking to will hang up first, placing you in wrap-up mode automatically without having to click the end call button for every call. You will receive a caller disconnected message if the caller hangs up first. Setting a disposition is the last step in processing a call. Dispositions reflect the end result of the call. The dispositions available for a call may be different for each campaign. For example, an outbound sales campaign can have a different set of dispositions compared to an inbound customer support campaign. Your supervisor will provide instructions on which dispositions to use for your calls. During call wrap-up, click the Set Dispositions button and select the disposition which accurately describes the result of the call. You can also use the search box in case you see a lot of dispositions assigned for your account. Simply type a disposition name and it will autofill the list with dispositions related to what you typed. In this example, we see a contact calling ABC Company and inquiring if their store is open during the weekends. The agent provides the necessary response to the contact and documents the inquiry under the comment section. Once done, the agent then selects the disposition code General Inquiry given that this is the option that best represents the call. Immediately after a disposition is chosen, you are made available to take the next call, assuming you did not set a not ready state prior. Agents can send broadcast messages to one or several users. A broadcast message allows you to send notifications or announcements that will pop up on the user's screen, while an instant message works more like a chat message. The 5.9 Agent Desktop Plus provides this built-in functionality to all logged-in internal users. You can send text messages to other agents, 
supervisors, or administrators using this chat function. Remember that this is permission-based and may not be available for your account. To send a broadcast message, click the message icon. Click New Broadcast. Search for the user that you want to send the broadcast to, then select the checkbox. You can add more than one user to the broadcast. Type your message, then click Send. To send an instant message, use the same message icon on the upper part of your screen. Click on the New I Am button. Search for the user that you want to send an instant message to, then select the checkbox. You can add more than one user to a chat session. Click Confirm to start the chat session. Type your message, then press Enter on your keyboard to send it. If you want to add more users to the session, click on the Add People icon. Simply check the additional users, then click Confirm. To end the chat session, click the X icon, then confirm with the End button. On the 5.9 Agent Desktop Plus, an agent can ask for assistance from supervisors or administrators directly from the web browser. To request help from an administrator or supervisor, click Help, then select Request Help. The Request Help pop-up will appear. Here you can choose who you want to send the request to. If you select Supervisor, you can filter it to send the request to all supervisors or to a supervisor from a specific skill. Click the Send Request button to send the request for help. A small window will appear on the supervisor or administrator screen stating that you sent a request for help. If the supervisor or administrator acknowledges it, then a chat session window will appear on your Agent Desktop Plus. Through this chat session, you can give more details on what you need assistance with. The Restart Station option allows you to re-establish your audio connection to the 5.9 Data Center. You can use this option if you did not hear the three audio tones during login or are experiencing poor audio quality. Before restarting your station, make sure that you are in an on-break state. Click the Restart icon on the lower right. This function will disconnect the current line and reconnect the audio connection to the 5.9 data center. Wait for three tones to play. The three tones indicate a successful audio connection. The soft phone status is displayed on the Home tab in the upper right of the page. The status will indicate connected once you have a successful soft phone connection. To log out of Agent Desktop Plus, click on the Settings icon located on the upper right of the page and select Log Out. Depending on your setup, a reason code may be required to exit the application. A Log Out reason code is used for reporting purposes to indicate why you are exiting the application. If Log Out reason codes are enabled, select a reason from the drop-down list and click Confirm to exit. If the logout reason code function is not enabled for you, simply click Confirm to exit the application. 